Sherlock, don't get lost in this huge garden. Follow the sound of my voice. Welcome to Il Palazzo de Luso, sir. If you need something, sir, please inquire at reception. Welcome to Il Palazzo di Lusso, sir. We just need your signature. Would you kindly sign these papers, sir? There you are. Ah, Mr. Holmes. Uh, yes, we have room 221 prepared for you. I see it was reserved for two people. Uh, would you like a second key? Oh, uh, no, I, I think we'll stick together. Very good. Rooms are upstairs, sir. Welcome to Cordona. Hurry up, Sherlock. I want to see our room. I hope there's a balcony with a view. Would you like a drink, sir? I apologize, sir, but your room is not yet ready. Perhaps in the meantime you would like to relax in the foyer? Tonight the restaurant is offering a complimentary Marlin ceviche to all our guests. Let's check what they have on offer. Mm -hmm. Your room is upstairs, sir. Number 221. Hey, Sherry. Just our luck. If seafood's not to your taste, everyone loves Benedict's batch. Our poached eggs with hollandaise sauce. Hey, Sherry. Just our luck. A medium, John. Haven't we been through this already? Come on, it's not like we've got anything better to do. Excuse me, sir, but I believe Mr. Galich is conducting a seance at the moment. Perhaps you'd care to have your portrait drawn while you wait? Why? Pardon me. Why should I sit for a portrait? I... Sir, it's art. It doesn't need a why. It is its own justification. All things require justification, be they objects, systems, or beliefs. How about art as the lens through which we see the truth of the world? That's backward. Truth is not subjective and not complicated. It's just the truth. It either is or it isn't. You do not need a lens to see it, just an open mind. Ha! Huh. That seems rather close-minded. Truth, like beauty, is in the eye of the beholder. So tell me, what do you see? Mediocrity. Come now, Sherry, what did he do to deserve that? The servant mentioned ceviche at the bar, Sherry. You should grab us some and I'll find us a table. I'm starving. The servant mentioned ceviche at the bar, Sherry. You should grab us some and I'll find us a table. I'm okay, starving. time to check if John found us a nice table for the evening. If seafood's not to your taste, everyone loves Benedict's batch. Our poached eggs with hollandaise sauce. Mm -hmm. 
Sherry, I'm over here with my new Ursine companion. Cordona's even quieter than I remembered. It's going to be a long evening. Ah, come now, Sherry. What say we amuse ourselves with a little game? What were you thinking? Oh, promise me it isn't nonsense. After being cooped up on that boat, I am itching for activity. No. As you can see, someone left a cane on our table. I simply thought you could identify its owner. Ah, so it is nonsense. It'll take me a minute, John, at most. Well then, you can deliver it to him as well. Deliver it to him? <laughs> then what are the staff here for? Aesthetics? Oh, stubborn, Sherry. Too stubborn. You wanted something to do. Slapping oneself in the face is also something to do. That doesn't make it worthwhile. But all right. Let me take a look. The cane is made of ebony, it's worn uncared for, and bears the scars of numerous hits. The cane is made of ebony, it's worn uncared for, and bears the scars of numerous hits. A crest depicting a bulb of garlic in a meadow, perhaps the Fielding family or meadows, or Craven from the old English name meaning garlic place. The hand grip is a head of a golden Javanese statue, probably stolen from a temple. The dents suggest it has been used as a bludgeon. This cane is an expensive and ostentatious weapon. Its owner must be vain, volatile, and of noble English blood. Take it with you, Sherry. Let's return it to its owner. Pardon, monsieur, but I am not in the mood at all. Don't ask me about the cane. I was with you the whole time. Would you like a drink, sir? 